Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to knit the Raspberry Sorbet Button Cow. This is an easy project, and for this project, you'll need a large button, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle for finishing your cow, and you'll need a uh, US 15, these are 10 millimeter straight knitting needles. And the yarn I used for this project is Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick. This is the raspberry colorway, and this is the photo shown at the beginning of this video as well. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the oatmeal, just to show you a little bit of a different look um, if you wanna experiment with different colors. And all this essentially is, it's a cowl and it's just a rectangle that we've made. And it's just a super easy little lace two row sequence. And I've just put a button on one side and that way you can fold yours in. And I like to flip the collar down. So it's kind of almost like the color of a sweater or a shirt or something like that. And it's very cozy and bulky and very pretty. So let's get started. The finished dimensions of our cowl are 15 inches wide and 22 inches long. We're going to begin with our yarn. Again, this is the oatmeal. It's kind of a tweedy, speckled, um, off-white with some brown and black flecks through it. So we're going to use the long tail cast on to begin our project. So we're gonna pull out a length of yarn and our starting uh, stitch count for our cast on is 38. So we're gonna cast on 38 inches. So just pull a couple of lengths of yarn. And for the long tail cast on, you're really just gonna be estimating. I kind of like to overestimate. You can trim it later if it's too long. So let's put a slip knot on our needle. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your knitting needle and bring up the loop and tighten. This will be the first stitch, okay? Then we're gonna do, like I said, the long tail cast on. So you're gonna come in, you have two strands hanging down. This is the tail, and this one farthest from you is connected to our yarn ball, okay? So reach in with your fingers and then hold the bottom. So you're gonna make kind of like a triangle. We're gonna cast on 38 stitches. So this is one. So you're gonna come under, around, and through. That's two. To go more in depth of the long of the long tail cast on, I do have a video of that if you wanna practice and master that before you begin this project. So that's two, under, around, and through. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you can push these back, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, push them back, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. So we've cast on 38 stitches, and as you can see, this is going to be a very wide project. So we'll get a little bit more yarn. Okay, so then you're gonna take your other needle and the cast on stitches will be on your left, your left side, your left hand. And we're going to begin row one. This is just a two row, uh, easy, super, super easy lace pattern. 
So we're just gonna, I'm gonna show you row one and row two, and then you'll just repeat those rows for the entire project. So to work row one, you're going to knit the first stitch, just like that. Then you will yarn over just by wrapping the yarn around the right needle and knit two together. Insert the needle as if to knit a regular stitch, but into two stitches and then knit as you normally would. Just like that. So you're gonna do that all the way across. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. So just do that all the way across. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. So just keep doing that to the end of the row until you only have one stitch left on your needle. And we'll rejoin in just a moment towards the end of the row. So we're just coming up to the end of the row. And again, we've been working a yarn over, knit two together sequence all the way across. So we're just about finished. Yarn over, knit two together. Just like that. So now we have one stitch left and we're just going to knit that stitch. So row one is complete. You can see it's just starting to take shape. And I'm really glad that I used this particular yarn because I wanted to show you how this tweedy look looks a little different than the solid color. Equally pretty, just a little bit of a different look. So let's move on to row two. We're gonna turn and begin the new row. To do this row, this the row we just worked is the right side of our work. This is going to be the wrong side of our work. So we're going to purl the first stitch, just like that. And then we're gonna work a similar sequence that we just did in the previous row, but instead we're going to yarn over the same way and purl two together. Go in as you normally would to purl, but we're just gonna do two stitches instead of one, and then finish the purl stitch as you normally would, okay? So we're gonna do this all the way to the end until we get to that very last stitch. So yarn over, purl two together. Yarn over, purl two together. Just keep doing that till you get to that last stitch. Yarn over, purl two together. Yarn over, purl two together. And if we peek at our work for just a moment, you can start to see those pretty decorative, holy uh, lace looking holes starting to form. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna rejoin towards the end of the row. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the row. Again, we're yarn over and purl together. We've been doing that all the way across, as you can see. And then this very last stitch, we're just going to purl, just like that. So to finish your cowl, you're just gonna keep repeating rows one and two over and over and over until your cowl is about 22 inches long. If you want yours a little longer, just keep going. And when you're finished working rows one and two to get to 22 inches, then you'll just go ahead and bind off. We're gonna do a basic bind off. If you have a preferred method of binding off, feel free to do that. But all we're gonna do is knit a stitch, knit another stitch, and then take the stitch that you first knit and lift it up, over, and off the needle. Then you'll knit another stitch and do the same thing. Lift it up, over, and off. You'll do this all the way across until one stitch is left on your knitting needle. So 
So we're coming up to the end and we just did a basic bind off all the way across. Just gonna knit that very last stitch, lift up over and off of our needle. So now we have one little stitch left. Okay, so then what you can do is just cut the yarn and then just fasten off. Obviously yours will be much bigger than this, but then you can take your tapestry needle, thread it with your yarn, and you'll weave in the end. What I like to do is go to the wrong side of the work, go in once, in one direction, Come back in the other direction. That will, for the most part, lock that little tail in. Okay, and you can take your scissors and trim. So let's go ahead and sew the button on to our work. I'm gonna use a different color so you can see what I'm doing, but you're just gonna thread your tapestry needle with a tail and then you'll put your button where you'd like it to go. And then just come up from the back. I normally do a matching piece of yarn, but my button is very neutral and my yarn is very neutral. So I'm gonna do the red for this. And then you'll go back down and you can do that a couple of times to get the button nice and secure. This happens to be um, a vintage button from my button collection. So I thought it would look pretty with this yarn. Okay, so just do that a couple of times. And then on the back, you can just tie everything. And again, I normally do matching yarn, but this way you can see everything. So go ahead and just tie that. And then you can take both of these tails and go ahead and weave them into the back of your work. Okay, so just do the same thing we did before. Just come in one direction and then in the other direction. Then you can take your scissors and trim. And then just do the same for the other tail and then our button will be on our project. So that is how you knit the Raspberry Sorbet Button Cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.